Should I stay or should I grow? That is the question. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. That's right. Should I stay or should I grow now? That's right. You know the song and now it's stuck in your head. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Dolfini. I am the Landlord Coach and host of the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show. It's really good to see you. Hopefully you had a, as good a weekend as I did. It was my birthday weekend. Had amazing weather here in Indiana. And, um, and it, for this late in the season in early November for it to be in the, in the high seventies, low eighties, no humidity. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I saw a bald Eagle while I was kayaking this weekend, like for like legit. It was, I was having a conversation with my good friend in New York. Um, I've known this guy, literally he's one of my best friends. He's, um, he was saying, yeah, remember back in when we were in seventh grade, we were told there's not going to be any oil. We're going to have to ride our bicycles to school and all the bald eagles will be dead because, <laughs> you know, they were basically, they were endangered. And now there's like bald eagles everywhere. I mean, I saw probably half a dozen just in this one stretch of the river here in Indiana. Super, super cool. They're just really awesome animals. But um, anyway, so. The topic of conversation is, you know, should I stay or should I grow? What am I talking about? Meaning, meaning what? Well, a lot of individuals that I talk about or that I talk to, that I'm talking to, they're trying to grow their rental portfolio and they're doing this for the purpose of, you know, wanting to build a rental portfolio to either stop working so they can do real estate full time or to have it finance another part of their life, right? So, you know, today I was going to, I'm doing this a little off script. I'm going acapella here, no, uh, no green screen or anything like that. Cause I just wanted to talk to you um, a little bit unscripted, but this is something that more lies in my heart. Cause I run into the conver this conversation all the time where you get people who are like, they recognize that they need to leverage to get into rental property. They, they recognize that that's, it's, it's almost impossible for the average person to save enough to buy their first real estate, their first piece of rental property, and certainly to grow. You have to leverage that. And the way leverage works, you know, the, the, the smaller down payment that you can get away with not putting into it, the higher the percentage returns are on that cash invested. It's just how math works. I'm not going to get into the math on that today, but that's just the reality. So, Obviously, getting into properties with less money down would be better because it increases your overall performance of the cash invested. The problem is it, it, it dramatically increases the risk. Ask me how I know because I lost a ton of real estate early on back in 2008, 2009 after I had spent about 10 years putting together a portfolio of real estate, about $6 million worth of portfolio uh, of rental real estate into a portfolio. And only to have most of it evaporate because I was so completely over leveraged, not just over leveraged in money, but over leveraged in time. So I managed to keep some, but the, the reality was it, it really, really hurt me. It hurt me bad. So there's a lot. So naturally I become a little bit more debt averse, but debt is still a tool in my toolbox that I want to use. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of people who say, well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, OP, OPM, use other people's money. I want to, you know, use other people's money. I get it, this and that. And I can make an argument for using other people's money right now, especially for long-term buy and hold. If we're heading into an inflationary environment, which I believe that is already here because repaying someone on a fixed rate of interest paying someone with dollars a year from now is going that are going to be worth less than dollars that are going to be valued today, right? <clears throat> because of inflation, you have an erosion of your purchasing power. So I could make that argument that you, that using other people's money, using debt does make sense. Where it comes into my, my mind is that you need a certain amount, a certain basic level of unleveraged real estate to provide for your basic needs, right? So in that particular case, I would say, I don't want to put that at risk at all, because if that goes away, then that's me going out and getting a job, right? That's me putting on a blue vest at Walmart. And 
I'm not saying I wouldn't do that if I had to provide for my family. I won't ever question anybody if that's what you want to do. But quite frankly, I don't want to, I mean, that's a fallback for me, but I don't want to fall back on that. I want to, I want to move forward, you know, and, and, and I don't want my retirement years to be defined by that either. I want to continue moving forward and, and getting, and, and my golden years are actually way better than the, than the years that I spent prior to that. Right. So the question is, should I leverage and continue to grow or should I deleverage? And then all of that cash flow that comes in now becomes mine. Now, there's lots of different components to that. There's, you know, tax consequences and, you know, you get deductions of mortgage interest and all this other stuff. But here's, here's where I just want you to fundamentally understand. What's your vision? What is your vision you're trying to accomplish? If you're, if you're wanting to grow for the sake of growth, if you're wanting to take your real estate portfolio from 10 to 100, just because you think 100 is, is a cool number, then I would really question as to why you want to do that. I really would question, say, all right, look, let's say that you can live your basic, your narrowest part of your vision. Let's say your narrowest part of your vision is to make sure that you pay your bills and you can go on vacation once a quarter with your significant other. And uh, once a year, you get to go on a really massive, awesome excursion and have some toys in your life that you really want. Okay. I'm not, that sounds like a good enough as vision. Anyway. I would want it more specific than that, but let's just pretend that that's the case. So now you've got that vision well-defined. So you say, okay, well, I would want to protect those, whatever number of assets, let's say it's 10 rental properties that delivers that vision for you. Right. And let's say that 10, those 10 rental units deliver for you, say free cash flow wise, $15,000 a month. Okay. I would protect that in any way that I possibly could. Right. Meaning I would make sure that it's held in separate LLCs, possibly hold the, all of them under a trust, you know, get with it, get with a good trust attorney on that to protect the assets. But then I would also want to make sure that they were protected from leverage, protected from creditors. So I would really be careful about leveraging those assets that, pro that provide my basic level of my closely held vision. Okay. So let's say for argument's sake, you have other pieces of your vision for other parts where you want to continue to grow and say, you know what? Yeah, this is my life. I really love my life. But my next thing, because again, let's face it, we humans are about the next thing. The next thing I would want would be to take an entire summer off to travel Spain and, you know, drink Spanish wine and lay on the beach all summer. Great vision. So could, you know, it'd be awesome if that happened but it's not the hill you're willing to die on. So in those particular cases, that those assets that, that provide that lifestyle, I wouldn't mind leveraging that if that enabled me to do that. So it's not really such a question of should I, can, should I leverage everything or should I leverage nothing? I don't think it's that simple. For me, the, the, the time wealth, the freedom on my calendar that I look for is what specifically is going to allow me to have the closest uh, or the cash flow that will allow me to live my closest hell vision. For me, that's having lunch with my wife every day. For me, that's being able to afford a, a faith-based school for my kids to go to so they can have a life centered around God, right? For me, it's about making sure that I have reliable transportation and I have health care and things like that. Do I have other things? Sure. But that right now is the hill I'm willing to die on. And those are the assets that I would want to protect the most and make sure that they're protected from creditors, protected from people who want to put judgments in and things like that. So again, I mean, could I live a lot more extravagantly? Sure. But after you climb through the sewer, like I did back in 2009, you probably would not blame me for the way I live. <laughs> That's all I have for today, everybody. Please make sure you place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. Most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Take good care.